Mr. Manoj Prasad, Chief Guest for the Day, esteemed panelists, participants from various corporates who have graced this occasion today with their August presence, my dear students, indeed it's a pleasure for me to welcome you all on this fourth edition of HR Conclave. I do remember it was 2014, the month of uh, August it must be, when we conceptualized the first edition of HR Conclave and slowly and gradually uh, we have experienced a good growth excellent response coming from industry, uh, good sort of discussion, brainstorming happening year after year and today we have all gathered here on the occasion of the fourth edition of HR Conclave. Welcome you all once again. I was actually reading one interesting report which Deloitte published a few weeks ago and uh, the report is, uh, you know, it's actually an eye opener and why I am making a reference of this report over here, there is a specific reason. Uh, we are academicians and uh, the corporate participants are HR participants. So, some or other way, we all are linked to one common factor that is human resources. And this report published by Deloitte uh, specifically uh, points out certain alarming facts and it says that Indian summer is coming. So, uh, my attention was attracted to this title and when I read that report, the report articulately states the fact that this is going to be the third growth wave in Asia and it would be certainly laid only by our country, that is India. The report says the first wave was laid by Japan, second wave was laid by China and the third wave which has started rising now according to the report, uh, India and the young Indians are going to be the leaders. Why the report says this fact? The, you know, the facts are mentioned very clearly in the report. It says, in 2017, median age of Indians is 27.3, whereas Chinese median age is 37.6, and Japanese median age is 47.1. So obviously, if we apply the normal logic of statistics, in the years to come, what is going to happen is more and more working population is going to uh, be active from our country rather than other Asian countries. Obviously, uh, this poses certain challenges as well. The report clearly points out the fact that as of now, there are 885 million people who are in the class of an active workforce. And the next two decades, this active workforce is expected to rise to 1.08 billion. And this billion people mark is going to remain with India for next half a century. That's what Deloitte report says. So obviously on one hand, this interesting demographics will definitely a boon to our country. But at the same time, it poses certain serious challenges and serious threats as well. As we all know, the technological disruptions are uh, changing the entire game of job markets. And we are currently reading one interesting book uh, which is titled as uh, 21st Century Professions. And uh, the book says that most of the professions which are currently practiced are going to vanish in the next 20 to 25 years. The technology is going to take the toll to that extent. A lawyer may not remain a lawyer, a practicing lawyer because of software introduced by IBM, so on and so forth. So on one hand, majority of youngsters are going to be the working population in the next two decades. On the other hand, technology is going to pose these challenges of job creation. In fact, if this situation is not handled properly, this boon would get converted into a bane for our country, that is India. And that's why what is required is a proper institutional framework and proper institutional setup, which would be an excellent collaboration between academics and industry. And that is why theme for this fourth HR conclave is united to elevate. We appeal the industry uh, to extend their helping hand to academics in overcoming this problem. If this problem is not answered properly, we would ex ex have an experience certain social tensions, social disruptions, economic issues in the decades to come. 
and the earning generations in that case would be in a big problem. So my sincere appeal to all uh, the industry participants who have uh, graced this occasion today that we must unite uh, for the cause of our country. There are certain ways uh, which can be adopted, means that can be adopted for uniting together and addressing this issue. Uh, normally, we, uh, this side of, uh, I would say, the profession that is academics, we are always looking for uh, guidance from the industry. Uh, what sort of guidance I am you know, expecting or what, uh, uh, requesting rather, is very simple. The first is, most of the time we get this feedback from industry that the curriculum which is taught in colleges and in universities is outdated. It's not contemporary. It does not cover what is currently practiced on the other side, that is in industry. <coughs> so my sincere appeal to all the industry professionals uh, sitting here today is if you can help academics in curriculum framing by giving your valuable feedback on the curriculum, we can certainly incorporate certain changes uh, for positive improvement in delivery so that the ultimate output, that is the students, can be as per your expectations. The second way we can unite together, we can join hands is, we invite people from industry uh, to conduct certain courses for our students. As we clearly know that academicians, whether we like it or not, they have to stick to theory because that's how university examination pattern is and we really can't help it out. But at the same time, more and more industry people coming and interacting with our students, with our faculty members, will bring that practical perspective in the entire game of academics. The third way we can unite is joining the hands with our faculty members. We firmly believe that our faculty members, most of us, uh, were in industry, were practicing we left industry maybe 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 15 years ago and joined academics. And of course, 5 years, 10 years is a big time period and a lot of changes happen in this time. If at all, it is possible, my appeal, my request to industry is that if you can give some projects to our faculty members, we are ready to spare them. They can come to your companies and they can work on the life projects. So this would be a sort of train the trainers and then that contemporary knowledge, current practices and percolate down to students from our faculty members. It is call of the hour when we consider, when we look at this report of delight uh, that we must join hands. And that's not for uh, either for academics or for industry. It is actually, my perspective is the larger perspective, the bigger perspective, we must join hands for our nation. Once again, I sincerely thank you all for sparing your valuable time, particularly on Saturday, right? And gracing this occasion uh, by coming here for this HR conclave. Uh, we look forward for uh, excellent interaction. We have two panels set for the day. The morning panel, which represents mostly manufacturing sector, and the afternoon panel, which represents mostly the service sectors. And I look forward for very interesting uh, interactions to happen uh, amongst the panel members, as well as between the panel members and the audience and the students as well. And this discussion would come to us as a lot of learning opportunities. Thank you very much. Welcome you all once again. Thank you.